Wow, come everyone. Today I have a very exciting theory crafted Titan one shot build for Path of Exile 2. Now, looking behind me for some initial demonstration of the Titan class, you can see this class is quite slow but with massive hits that can go across the map with shock waves and devastating attacks that stuns, armor break, and also shocks and destroys the enemies. So looking behind me, we have tons of notes for the one-shot Hammer of God's Titan, and we're learning this from my friend Half Mind. You can see that he has provided us with detailed notes for each of the skills, together with a summary of the skills and also the links, and plus all of the notable notes and also keystones that you want to go for this build. So yes, we have tons of information for this theorycrafted Titan build, and this makes me quite excited for this build. We even have ascension priorities of how you can do the highest damage, what are the ascension nodes that can be interesting to allow you to perfect this build, and get ready for Path of Exile 2 early access launch. Now before we dive into the builder's guide and also the notes, please keep in mind guys, the game is not released yet, and don't get overwhelmed with amount of links and also skill sockets over here. It is possible that we can reduce the amount of links and also usage of the skills. And we wanted to provide you guys with a more comprehensive all the way to the end game of the build so you can kind of understand where the build is going with up to 100 and also 15 skill knot points that is used for this build. So this build is definitely tailored towards more towards the mid and also end game, but it can also work in the early game. So stay tuned for the latest update for this build as we test this one for the early access. Now coming over to the skill trace for a Titan build. So the first skill we have is going to be Armor Breaker. Now over here, we're linking Armor Breaker with Break Endurance, Increase Armor Break, Splinter, Rupture, and also Bloodlust. This skill will allow us to have a massive 1,500 plus armor breaking effect and also the ability to combine this build with additional supporting gems, which allows us to get endurance charge on armor breaking enemies and also the ability to have aggravated bleeding, which will empower our damage for other skills. So this is the initial starter build and this is how we want to start the fight. And this initial skill will allow us to armor broken most of the monsters on the first hit. The supported gem are here to enhance the armor breaking value and together with the ability to have aggravated bleeding which we'll see with the main skill Hammer of the Gods, this is going to be empowering our damage. Now the plus of using this armor breaker link is that we can also consider removing the splinter from the link to reduce the need having additional support gem for this initial combo skill. The second skill link we have is going to be Sunder. Now you can see there's a long description for Thunder which have increased damage bonus and also abilities to deal additional damage to armor broken enemies and also causes shockwave. Thunder is linked with abilities like Life Lich, Brutality, Fist of War, Paralyze and also faster attacks. Now Thunder is usually our follow up primary DPS skill due to its high damage coefficient and also ability to guarantee critical hits when enemies are armor broken by the first initial skill coming from armor breaker. And this will have even higher increased critical damage, which is a big bonus. So usually against most of the monsters, the first two skills will combo them and one shot them for a majority of the time. And coming over to a third skill with Leap Slam. Leap Slam will allow us to travel and become a mobility skill together with increased stun buildup. We're linking Leap Slam with Ruthless, Momentum, Overpower, and also Exploit Weakness. Now, Leap Slam is going to be our solid stun ability. We want to have a lot of stun because as you're going to see in the later half, when we come over to the Ascension passives, we deal 40% more damage against stun enemies. And because of the great stun buildup with Leap Slam, we can have the ability to empower this skill with additional supported gems, and also this can allow us to take down stronger units which we cannot combo with the first two skills. And this also brings us to our fourth skill with Bond Shatter. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit, this may be a little better. Now over here we're linking Bond Shatter together with Devastate, Enduring Stun, Multiple Charges, and also Impact Shockwave. So coming over to the notes with Bone Shatter, this is going to be our heavy stun ability that sets up for additional burst window of damage. The goal of this ability is to fight powerful bounces and also elite so we can still one-shot enemies. 
it can apply full armor break on heavy stun due to the devastating gem that we have as support. And once we use after thunder and also leap stem, it can also bring the enemies back to armor broken, which can then provide us with additional bonus damage. And the ability to gain additional endurance charge is also quite preferable using this combo and also this skill. Now, fifth ability is going to be supercharged slam. We can combine this one with hourglass, combo finisher, melee physical damage, concentrated effect, and also area of effect. Now, supercharged slam is considered to be one of our heavy hitters, and it is combined with damaging units that is around others. Once this is fully charged, it can do a lot of damage together with shock waves. And of course, we're going to come over to our multiple roles. So this ability is actually quite interesting. The Ferocity Raw allows us to shift shift into a bear and also trigger all the Warcry skills. So we're combining this ability to trigger all the Warcrys with Seismic Cry, with Enraged Warcry, with Raging Cry, and also with Perpetual Charge. Now coming over to the notes, we can see that this ability is quite high requirement on intelligence, and this is something we want to test out. And it is possible that we might change this in the future to just go with Seismic Cry instead of trying to cast all the Warcrafts. Now this ability will boost the damage from our Seismic Cry and also increasing radius and also having the ability to not spend Endurance Charges on using Warcrafts, which is pretty good, but it does have a longer casting time and also the higher inter requirement. And of course now we're going to come over to our final big hitting spell, the Hammer of the Gods. This spell has a whopping 1307% attack damage bonus multiplier, which is a massive amplified coefficient, and this attack cannot be evaded. It does have a long casting duration though. We're combining this with a supporting gem with inevitable critical, with critical damage, with deep cuts, bleed chance, and also second wind. So here we're combining with a lot of critical damage bonus, with another boost of bleeding damage, and with some cooldown recovery. So the notes for this one is pretty comprehensive. This is going to be our one-shot massive ability. With a massive damage coefficient, we have the guaranteed crit, we have the critical boost, we have the bleeding damage bonus, and also we have aggravated bleeding from the combination of our initial skill with Armor Breaker. And here we do have an additional notes about bleeding not applying to monsters that has energy shield. And for this case, we want to stun the monsters and then use our massive damage during the stun window to take down those monsters. And we can also be casting ferocity roll. Now it is also recommended that maybe it's better to use supercharge slam that we have over here instead of harm of gods if enemy have energy shield. Now, in terms of the defensive skills, we have the Sorcery Ward, and this seems to be a very good defensive skill against elemental damage. The second defensive ability is going to be Scavage Plating. This skill is combined with Cannibalism, Vitality, and also Precision. This skill will allow us to have additional armor gain that is also stacking the tons of armor we already have. So going through the notes over here, Sorcerer Wound can allow us to absorb elemental damage up to 30% of our total armor. And we'll be having heavy investment towards armor and also strength. And our tether tree is also built towards survivability on this part. The scavenge and plating is a great source of increased armor. Together with facing multiple enemies, and each time we break enemies with armor break, we receive a bonus to armor, stacking at up to 8 times. So that is about 24% bonus armor. And as you guys are gonna see with the skill tree passive on the next part, we have a lot of bonus armor and also increased strength. Now coming over to the skill tree section of the Titan, it is gonna be a lot of description as we go through. I'll try to be a little quicker and also highlight some of the most important ones. I think it's actually easier if we come over here to the summary notes instead of us trying to pinpoint each of the points. Well, we can, of course. One of the bigger notes we have is gonna be blood magic. So let me zoom a little bit. It doesn't zoom really zoom. So this removes all mana and skill not cost us life instead of mana. But do remember guys, we do have a form of life lich as well to compensate for the loss of life. And one of the other big notes we have is gonna be giant's blood. This allows us to use a two-handed axe, mace, and also sword in one hand. And that's pretty good, right? You can even consider something great for the offhand. And over here, one of the bigger knots we have is going to be Iron Reflex. 
This converts all the evasion ratings to bonus armor. And remember that we have skills that based on our bonus armor will be getting more armor and also elemental damage reduction. Now, there are a lot more passive notes that I have highlighted. I do recommend coming over to our you know, notes over here to have a look at what are some of the things that can be great for this build. You're not expected to get all 115 points, but some of the hardest knots over here can show you what can empower you in terms of survivability and also bonus damage. Now, coming over to the final part, I do want to spend a little bit of time to going through some of the ascension passives and also possibilities of doing more damage with the Titan. Now, do keep in mind, we do not have the full ascension board. It is possible we might change some of those progression and also priorities in the future if there is a better knot, but we have seen a majority of those. So you can see some of the highlighted ones. Now, Half Mind has been very nice and also highlighted what are the priorities we can go for as you do the first, second, third ascension. So with the first ascension, what we're looking for is, let me come over here, we're looking to get surprising strength. And this ability can be very good because we'll be trying to stun enemies and once enemies are stunned, we can deal additional 40% damage. To path through to this way, we're getting crushing blows. So crushing impact will be the path we take and on the second trial of ascension, we can unlock the 40% damage increase against stunned enemies and this will be massive. Now the second path of a progression, if we come over here, is going to be essential empowerment or we can go with a bonus life. Now just to update, we did get the latest official information of all the ascensions for the Titan. So I'm adding this to the video. So let's have a look at this. Now we are adjusting a little bit. So you, if you guys remember previously, we talked about going with additional damage with the 40% damage against our enemies, that is still true. And now, because what you can see is the previous 20% more maximum life is now 15% maximum life. So we also have the understanding of the first knot, which provides us with 50% more armor for armor. And also over here, the fifth knot, providing us with 50% more small passive skills bonus, which can be interesting. We're getting a description with Ancestral Boost that increases the booster skill damage by 20% and also area of effect. Aftershock also looks really good. So just as a brief summary after the latest update, so we have two options. We can go with six and seven for the first two ascension and then two and three. So basically we go six and seven, two and three. And those are gonna be the crushing blows and also the surprising strength first to gain the 40% damage against stun enemies. And then two and three to give us aftershock and also ancestral boost. Now it is optional guys, you can go with two and three first then six and seven. So this is to consider that maybe while you're getting the additional stun damage, the stunning potential of crushing impact may be giving us awkward combo and you don't want to be automatically stunning enemies. You might want to manually stun enemies and maybe you're actually getting more area of effect and also more radius by going two and three first to gain the aftershock and also ancestral boost with higher damage and also wider area of radius. Finally, because of the nerf to the survivability, the 20% HP bonus is not 15%. It is still optional to go with this because, you know, Mysterious 9 inch 20%, 15% bonus HP is always good for any build to survive. Now I have discussed with Half Mind a little bit. We don't think Storm Skin is that good unless we know if this is a multiplier to the existing armor and also base armor that the Titan and also Warrior skill passer will scale on. And this is to be tested on the first one. In terms of the Hawking form, with 50% increased small passive nodes, every two small nodes is equal to three not now. But that said, it does take four skill points to get to here, and not many people want the colossal capacity to have 20 more inventory slot, which just does not help you much other than saving some time not going back to town, right? So let me know what you guys think on this latest update that is added to this video and also this theory crafter build for the Titan. Now, hopefully you guys enjoy this concept build. Again, a big thank you for Half Mind for sharing this build. And if you guys do want to share with the community your build and also your, you know, your setup for the early access, 
make sure you join our Discord and also send me a direct message, or you can leave a message in the YouTube video. But it is a little harder for me to reply all the YouTube videos. The best way to contact me and also share the build with community is to go with Discord. And again, guys, if you have any feedbacks or you know creative ideas for this build, do let us know in the comments below because we would love to hear from you guys and also to help to adjust for the build and make it ready for the early access. Now, before we finish, if you guys haven't subscribed, this is a really good time to do so because I'll be looking into the latest Path of Exile 2 news on different communities and also on the official forum, official webpage. I'll also be looking into the best build for each of the class as the meta develops with the Chinese and also the English community. So stay tuned for the latest update and also guides for Path of Exile 2. And of course, this is going to be a big month for us. And I'll try to bring you guys all of the latest content and also guides for Path of Exile 2 to come.